mobile routers. What are they? What styles do they come in? And most importantly, do you need one? Hi there, I'm Cherie with the Mobile Internet Resource Center. And a topic that we field a lot is about mobile routers. And if you need one of these and just what are the differences between all these different kinds that they come in. Now, first of all, a mobile router really just means it's taking an internet source and creating a local area network. And a mobile hotspot device like the Netgear Nighthawk or your smartphone are technically routers because that's exactly what they do. They have a modem inside that takes a cellular signal and then creates a Wi-Fi or wired network that you can use to get tablets and laptops and other things online. But when we're dealing with mobile internet, very often, because we teach redundancy, if you rely on mobile internet, you should be prepared to have multiple ways to get online because the best mobile internet is the one that works at your current location. And as our viewers and cruisers, that means we're moving around and our options could vary a lot. So a lot of us travel with multiple hotspot devices or multiple cellular data plans on different carriers. Maybe we have AT&T, Verizon, and maybe even T-Mobile as well. And perhaps sometimes we want to be able to connect to a campground or marina's Wi-Fi or for driveway surfing with friends and family, we want to use their Wi-Fi network. That means a mobile router allows us to connect all of those different signals into one local area network. Because the problem that comes about is if you're carrying multiple hotspots on different carriers, is let's say at this location, AT&T is working best and at the next one, Verizon is. Well, that means all of your laptops and tablets, maybe you have your lights, you have your home automation systems, your video surveillance, your video streaming devices, your printer, your local area network, uh, storage devices, all of these things, they need to connect to a local area network. And if that's being hosted by your hotspot and now you switch to using Verizon, well, now you have to go to every single one of those devices and change which Wi-Fi network they are connected to. Well, a router removes that. It combines all these multiple sources through one router, creating one local area network, allowing all of your devices, your tablets, your laptops and all those other gizmos that I just mentioned to that one network. And then you manage on the router which cellular connection or Wi-Fi or Marina campground Wi-Fi network that you might connect to. That's all managed on the router. And you don't have to go and individually reset up every single device on your network. So it can help streamline all of the mobile internet devices and access points that we use to get online. And that's why a mobile router might make sense for you. If you have a lot of devices that you need to get online or you are carrying multiple uh, internet sources, then a mobile router might be worth considering. Now, if you have internet at a fixed location home, you probably have a router that is creating your local network, um, whether one you purchased or one that's provided by your cable company or your internet provider. And well, these are routers. What makes a mobile router different than these residential routers? Can you take those residential routers on the road? Probably not, because there is one big difference. Most residential routers are designed to have just a single upstream input, usually Ethernet going to the cable modem or to DSL or something else like that, but just that one upstream input. If you want to use something cellular, if you want to use something a distant remote Wi-Fi, residential routers tend not to have that feature supported. So when we're talking about mobile routers, we're talking about routers that have the features to support connecting to multiple different types of upstream devices, making them a lot more flexible and suitable for use on the road. Um, the routers we talk about from as mobile routers often also have the ability to be powered off of 12 volt power, so they can be powered by a, a RV or boats electrical system. And um, they often have support for external antennas. So you can not just have little inside antennas, but you can hook up antennas up on your roof to get better cellular or Wi-Fi reception. So all of these features come together to make them much more flexible for um, mobile use. And those are the ones we track at the Mobile Internet Resource Center as mobile router contenders. But there is still a huge variety of potential options out there to consider um, depending on the features. And we kind of break them down in a few different flavors. Um, first off, you've got things like this that are technically 
Where's the other half of the Alpha? Yeah, the Alpha setup here that does Wi-Fi as WAN. This will talk to a campground or marina's Wi-Fi at a distance. And then this little box acts as a router and shares that network in, indoors. It does um, basically is focused on the long range Wi-Fi side of things. We have other routers, many other ones that have support for USB tethering. So if you've got mobile hotspots from different carriers like AT&T and Verizon and T-Mobile or potentially even your phone, a lot of these kind of routers have USB ports and they're not just there for providing power or you know a lot of residential routers have USB ports as well that can share files on a hard drive or something. But on mobile routers, the USB ports can be used for tethering these other cellular devices and using them as an upstream connection. So plug in a USB cord between here and suddenly you're sharing the connection via um, a router to all of your other local devices. And by changing what's plugged into the USB port, you might be changing what your upstream carrier is without reconfiguring the router itself. And very handy sort of feature is the USB tethering. And there's a lot of devices that potentially support USB tethering. You know, even tiny little travel routers like this that focus on having a USB port and plug that in and share that. Now, then you can work your way up to routers that actually have the cellular integrated inside of them. So the router can have, you know, choose between uh, long distance Wi-Fi, um, Ethernet, and uh, built-in cellular, um, and also uh, USB tethering. So you suddenly have this uh, router like this, uh, Wi-Fi Ranger Aspen, acting as a master switch box for all these different type of connections and in the router's control panel. You'll pick between them and you might have features depending on the router that let you prioritize them. If one goes down, automatically go to the next and other things. You know, as you work your way up, more advanced routers have features like that. Other cellular integrated routers like this one might actually, this is a PepWave um, Balance or PepLink Balance 20X, actually has two different cellular modems. So it can have two cellular connections active at once. Potentially, you can also do USB tethering on this one. This one does not support Wi-Fi as WAN as a uh, built-in feature, so kind of weigh what's important to you. And of course, can do Ethernet as an input. Here's another PEP wave with dual cellular inputs. So Cradle points a similar rugged mobile router designed to be inside of hot vehicles, not um, to take a lot of abuse and uh, uh, be run directly off of 12 volt. And over here. MoFi, another type of, uh, of router with cellular integrated into it. Now, when you're getting, you know, considering whether you want a cellular integrated router, you have to keep in mind the cellular modems in these are kind of baked in. So you're investing in a router plus a cellular modem, and as technology evolves, do you want to have to replace this every year or two? Or if you're buying just hotspots and USB tethering, you can keep the router and upgrade your hotspots as needed. So different trade-offs. There's flexibility that comes from cellular integrated and not. Then there's even things that are, this is uh, um, Netgear Orbi. It's basically a residential router intended to work normally like a typical residential router would do, but it has cellular embedded in it, a SIM slot, and it can either take Ethernet from your cable modem or cellular and share that out and around a house. So some residential routers are starting to incorporate mobile features, but then again, no USB tethering or some other mobile features. you got to balance it all. And then finally, there are actually routers that might live on your roof. Like this is a Wi-Fi Ranger Converge. It is a full-on router with all the electronics inside of it that can be up on the roof of an RV and has the, electric, the radios and antennas there for better distant reception and then has Ethernet coming down inside to potentially a second indoor router or just to share the connection from outside inside. So there's a lot of different potential devices, a lot of different things that can work as a router for you. And you have to weigh your needs and um, decide what fits you best, if at all. And Cherie's going to explain that. Now, how do you select amongst all of these devices? Well, first, don't get fixated on these specific devices. This is being filmed October 2020. These are the current options on the market. There's probably more out there that we just don't have room for on our boat to store. And as time goes on, more options will come out. So if you're watching this later, check and see what our current options are. Now, we offer a lot of resources to help you figure out your ideal mobile internet setup. None of these are the singular 
best option. They all have pros and cons and trade-offs, and it all comes down to how you want to assemble your mobile internet arsenal. And we have a guide on assessing your needs to help you determine just how much internet is important to you, how much you need, and what sorts of devices you might want. We have an approaching your setup guide as well that can help. And we have some interactive explorers that help you go through some typical setups and see what the current options are for each component and antennas and routers and modems and data plans and all that sort of stuff. Um, so go check there. We also have a full guide to mobile routers at mobileinternetinfo.com slash routers that goes into a lot of the different features that differentiate these different devices that might be important to you, like load balancing, bonding, USB tethering, local area ethernet, all those sorts of features. We go a lot deeper there as well. Now, all of our content is funded by our mobile internet aficionados. While we have received some of this equipment for evaluation, we are not sponsored by any of the manufacturers of this device. We are not incentivized to try to sell you on any of it. We try to keep as unbiased as possible, present our hands-on findings with each of these devices, and help our members navigate through selecting their right setup. And we could do none of this without them. So if mobile internet is going to be a important part of your lifestyle, please do consider becoming a member. Well, you can get a lot of content and assistance through our free content, going further with our member content might help you even more and get you discounts on some of this stuff because that's what we offer our members as well as our in-depth reviews and our guidance classrooms and Q&A forums. So thank you for joining us and may the bandwidth be with you. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.